Okay. In 24 hours, <laughs> I'm supposed to go on an epic adventure in Guatemala. And I'm sick as fuck. I don't really quite know what to do. Um, <coughs> you know, I bought travel insurance for the trip, but that only covers me <coughs> if I get sick in country and have to go to the hospital or get COVID or something. It doesn't cover for flight cancellation or being sick before you go. <coughs> what do you do? What would you guys do? Do I just tough it through and get there? <coughs> I don't know. Hello everyone, um, here at this wonderful Airbnb in uh, Antigua, Guatemala. Uh, I've been here for about a day and a half now. Um, I haven't really taken the time to vlog. It was quite an adventure getting here. Uh, for about four days leading up to the trip, uh, I was really, really sick. Um, to be honest, I wasn't even quite sure that I was gonna be able to make it on this trip, uh, but I decided to tough it through. Um, we had a 13 hour flight in total getting here. Um, Edmonton to Seattle, Seattle to LA, uh, LA to supposed to be Guatemala City, um, but the plane ended up diverting and uh, we spent a couple hours uh, after landing in El Salvador. Uh, because I was sick, I had a really terrible time with the pressure in my ears and uh, yeah, we just needed a couple of days here to um, recover. Um, Antigua has been a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, we're staying in a very lovely place, drinking a bit of the uh, local brew here. 
Um, yeah, we've had to kind of change plans a little bit. Um, a little disappointing because uh, I'm still sick and having a little bit of trouble uh, with the altitude and things like that adjusting here. Um, we had a reservation to climb up the um, Acatenango volcano. Uh, it's one of the very popular things to do here in Antigua, Guatemala, but um, to be honest, I'm just too sick. Uh, I don't think there's any way that I could do it in a way that would be um, safe. And uh, so trying to stay positive, you know, we're just trying to focus on uh, the things that we're able to do rather than focusing on the things that we're not able to do. So we've readjusted a little bit. Um, tomorrow we're going to get up and uh, we're going to head out to Lake Atitlan, uh, another very famous place here in Guatemala. It'll pro probably be a little bit more relaxing than the very intense uh, volcano hike. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna spend another couple of days hopefully relaxing, recovering um, from this illness that's been plaguing both Jessica and I. And uh, we're hoping to be feeling better in a couple of days and just um, continue on with the trip from there. Something you have to do sometimes when you travel, you know, you can't always choose how you're gonna feel. Um, and it's just one of those realities of travel, right? You can plan these epic adventures, but sometimes your body just doesn't cooperate. So um, we're gonna go out there and see what we can find and uh, either Way, we're going to explore and uh, see what we can see in this beautiful country. Cheers, guys. I hope everyone's having a great night. Something that's really important when you travel, you can't always control how you feel. You need to focus. You know, sometimes I think all of life is just the layovers between flights. <laughs> that's some real wisdom, babe. Where did you pick up that gem? From Bohemians at the airport. Probably a couple of girls from Ohio. A couple of really smart 21 year olds. Yeah, you know. From Illinois. They got figured out. friends wherever I go. And this is my little buddy tonight. Hey. Hey, Perito. Are we hanging out, Baco? Uh, uh. Hello, everyone. We just uh, made it out here to uh, Lake Atitlan in Guatemala. It was quite an adventure getting here today. Um, yeah, it was a little sad to be leaving Antigua, as I said in the uh, last vlog. Uh, both Jess and I have been pretty sick in the days leading up to the trip. Uh, we had to sort of rearrange and make new travel plans because uh, we had planned to spend a couple of days climbing up the volcano there. And uh, we were just too sick to make that happen. But that's what happens when you travel sometimes. You need to be flexible. You need to adjust and, and go with the flow. And I mean, let me see if I can just kind of show you where we are right now. It's not like we have anything to be disappointed about. Um, so yeah, we left Antigua today. I definitely have some thoughts on uh, our travels there and what I thought about that city, but uh, I probably need to take a little bit of time to process and think about that before I uh, 
you know, go on a long winded rant, but um, yeah, we got up this morning and I had booked us a uh, shuttle service, ones that are quite common here in Guatemala to get us out here to Lake Atitlan. We had booked it 24 hours in advance and uh, it was supposed to pick us up right from our hostel. And apparently there was some, I don't know, a whole kerfuffle with uh, them sending me emails that didn't come through, then sending me WhatsApp messages that didn't come through. I think it had something to do with me changing over to a Guatemalan SIM card. Uh, I'm not entirely sure still what happened, uh, but I think we rearranged pretty well. Yeah, yeah, I was really impressed, actually, at how you rearranged so well. Thanks. Um, we found ourselves a new ride. We got ourselves out here uh, before the last boat shuttle, um, which was a really cool experience. Here at Atitlan, it's a bunch of different villages that surround this big volcanic crater of a lake. Um, we're staying in the village of Santa Cruz. Um, as I said, we just arrived. We really haven't had a chance to explore yet. Um, we're going to go out and do a bunch more of that. But I'll show you right now. You get around here by taking these boat taxis from village to village. 25 quetzales. I'm too tired right now to think of what that <laughs> conversion actually is. I'll do the little thing that puts it up on the screen or something later, but uh, we made it out here. We're gonna take some time to relax. Tomorrow we'll find ourselves some more adventure, but right now it's time for a beer. It's time for a rest. We'll find some food. Those are the only things we have to do for the rest of the day. Nothing else. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a chill night somewhere too. What's up everyone? Uh, we're just here in uh, Panawachel. Uh, it's kind of the main town that sort of surrounds uh, Atitlan. We're on our way kind of back. It's a bit of a travel day today. We just spent two wonderful days uh, going around Lake Atitlan, uh, a beautiful place in the world. Um, there's many, many villages around the lake. We got to check out um, just a couple of them. We went over to a place called San Marcos where we got to do some swimming. Uh, and we went and checked out uh, one of the larger towns in San Pedro where we found uh, this really, really cool museum. What did you think about the museum, oh. Jess? You thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was really delighted that as a museums person, one of the challenges we see in North America is uh, many traditional museums won't adopt a polyphonic history. They will tell a very biased history coming from one, um, one point of view. And so I was really delighted to see that it was a science museum and it really smoothly integrated also like indigenous worldview uh, in a way that made a lot of sense. And I think there's a lot of Canadian museums that could learn some lessons there. Yeah, it was a really neat experience for sure. We enjoy finding these little places that are a bit off the, the beaten path. Um, we were the only people in the museum, I think, certainly the only foreigners. So um, it was quite a nice little private experience to find in a, a hustly and bustly kind of place. So. As I said, uh, we're just at a nice little cafe here. We're kind of waiting to uh, get on our transportation, which is gonna take us all the way back to Guatemala City. It's going to take us all of today and a good part of tomorrow as well to make it up to the north of the country. You know, I said I was gonna take a little bit of time to uh, formulate my thoughts a little bit before I talked about what uh, my experience was my first couple of days here in, in Guatemala. Guys, Antigua is a beautiful place in the world. And uh, I also want to acknowledge right off the bat that the time that I spent there, I was sick. Of course, we were a little disappointed that we had to cancel our volcano hike. Um, but you know what, I think 
I've come to the conclusion that I just really wanted to love Antigua more than I did. Um, it's another gringo town in the world. And trust me, I realize as I'm saying this, the irony of a foreign traveler talking about uh, not liking a place because there's so many other foreign travelers. But, um, you know, it's very difficult now in the modern world to, to go to these places. Um, and I realize it. they're beautiful places in the world. Everyone wants to see them, including myself. Uh, I mean, I fully acknowledge I'm part of the problem traveling here as well. But, um, you know, you can't deny the fact that when you get into Antigua, I mean, it's filled with a lot of... Um, young foreign travelers, people that want to party, people that have a, a very different vibe when they travel than certainly I do as a, uh, a middle-aged man. Um, we ran into a lot of evangelicals, people that were there on mission trips, just for reasons that completely differed for the reasons that I travel. Um, and that doesn't mean that those people are wrong or they're not welcome or they don't have the right uh, to travel to these places, but um, it does become a little bit difficult for me to go to these beautiful places, perhaps that I've maybe built up in my head a little bit too much. I mean, Guatemala is a place that I've wanted to see um, since I studied Mesoamerican societies in university for 20 years, it's been on my bucket list. And then you come here to this beautiful place and yes, there's the cobblestone streets and yes, there's the um, ancient architecture, but there's also a little Caesars and a Wendy's on the corner. And I had to put in a concerted effort to actually find Guatemalan food. And as I said, you run into these people who are here on uh, mission trips, you know, for completely different reasons than, uh, you know, for the values and the ideals that I have when I travel. And uh, that for me certainly made Antigua uh, a bit of a difficult place. Um, it's a beautiful place in the world, undeniably. I won't take any of that away from it. Um, but I must say, I'm very excited to be here in the north of the country to experience a different part of Guatemala. Um, certainly when we went out to Lake Atitlan, uh, it also has a very different vibe. Uh, I really enjoyed there the interactions that we had with some of the more local people, some of the indigenous people. Um, you know, there is a bit of a disconnect when you meet local Mayan people but the interactions that you're able to have are transactional. Um, I certainly found in Antigua, I mean, the people that you saw wearing traditional dress um, that were from the indigenous cultures, I mean, they were making their livings in tourism. They were trying to sell you things. Uh, you know, we were getting scammed for tuk-tuk rides, all the things that you'd see in other places in the world. Um, but it just goes to show that if you push a little harder, um, you get outside the tourist zones, um, there still is the possibility of having authentic interactions. I think we talked a little bit about the other day, um, the amazing museum that Jess and I found in San Pedro, uh, out at Lake Atitlan, um, that had a wonderful polyphonic perspective on um, the ge geology and the creation of uh, the volcanic regions um, that included all of the different indigenous perspectives. Um, and it was just such a beautiful thing to see and and uh you know we talked in depth how i think there's still a lot of museums and a lot of places in canada that could uh learn a few lessons uh from that so that's my two cents on the matter uh, i hope i don't sound too much like a grumpy old traveler